And hello again and welcome back to Corrupted Krill. This time I'll be working on some desert terrain. Mainly the basic styles I stick with here. Getting those fundamentals right and then starting to create some nice interesting pieces from there. Now with a lot of desert terrain I wasn't quite happy with the look and the feel. Sometimes all these pure white based sand mounds and dunes and all that kind of thing just seem out of place sometimes on the table. There's not enough contrast there to really draw the eye through that gameplay. So that's what I was working at here and I took influence from a lot of the Australian deserts in this instance with the yellows and reds and browns that kind of mix into that golden like sand. It really creates a lovely visual on the table and that's what we are doing today. Now, with any good project, it of course starts with XPVC, expanded PVC. This is the usual thing I use for basing, which is easy to cut and doesn't warp as easily. So I've cut that to shape, just, you know, using a few round edges and making them a little bit different and then roughing up the surface so it can be glued to. Then it's all about getting those hill shapes on top. Now, for me, I've got a lot of off cuts from the bottom of my hill when you're slicing off that bubbled little section. And I've used a lot of that to kind of mold hill shapes. And one of the things, you do want one, you know, gradual hillside, but it kind of works when you have like a nice sharper edge on another as well, a nice curved sharper edge where the sand has started to fall down on another side. Now, there's a few ways you can make these hills apart from expanded foam. You could use the usual kind of XPS foam, carving as you go. You could use just straight up modeling mix compounds and all that kind of stuff. You could also go with some sort of uh, alfoil like base inside and then even paper mache over the top of that structure. There's a lot of ways you can build this. This is my preferred way just because it is quick, easy and utilizes some of my scraps. From there, it's time to make this a nice, smooth and usable surface. Now, one way is to use paper mache, just nicely watered down PVA, chuck a few sheets over, wash it down and you've got a nice hard substance there already. For me, I go with a nice wall filler mix. Now, this hasn't got any additives. It's just a nice, smooth wall filler and I kind of use my hands to smooth all that over the top. Now, one thing I did do as well, you can use this technique to also make a much larger, like even dune structure as well. For me, I kind of used a gradual hill motif, but you can even go with a nice sharp edge to sort of see how a kind of feel to these dunes as well. It's all up to you in how you carve and where you kind of get inspiration from. One thing you will do when doing this though is utilizing your hands a lot in the process. Like I've used a lot of tools and there is just nothing like using those hands to get a nice smooth edge. Now that our pieces are molded and ready, it's time to start talking about decorating them. Now for me, I always try and get a good range of materials here. And I've used a variety, as you can see, from bark to rocks and foams and other little pieces of branch that I have found. Now one thing I did use, I found outside some nice little scraggly um, sticks that had come off one of these trees and a nice large structure. Not the greatest in terms of durability, but I did try and break that down a little bit by giving a bit of a latex coat. Now, as you'll see in the final product, I'm not exactly happy with the latex on it afterwards. It's kind of a bit blobby and molded it in a way that I wasn't really happy with then. So I would probably water it down next time just in case, or even use maybe a couple of Mod Podge layers instead of just the thick latex itself. You just lose a bit too much detail in the process. I tried to have like a certain side of these dunes where I put most of my foliage. I wanted to keep them a little bit bare. I know a lot of the Aussie bush is just trickled with life all over. These ones I wanted to keep a bit more sparse. But as with a lot of dune-like areas, you do have one area that is less windswept than others usually. One area where more of the wildlife will tend to grow. And that's what I try to do here with a lot of tufts and rocky areas, um, little twigs poking up, all manner of things. Now what I try to do is have a lot of that 
just around that area first placing the rocks bark and any other structures around the space kind of poking out within the wall filler and then adding my pieces around that from bits and pieces of extra bark coming up sticks as well as a few things that are called pepe cones when broken up they have a nice hollow structure and look great as fallen tree logs in your builds now this is just the basics part because we are going to be priming them as well and one thing i could have used and i did at the start but then took it out for my own little trees is just wire armatures some of those little um, woodland scenic tree mixes you get kind of poke them up out of there you can have them as you know bare trees trees that are growing in this area as well it is up to you here and that's part of it just keep it random keep it light have fun with the decorating part here and of course once that's done it is time to give this a good prime now for me i used a very cheap and on special primer very heavy red now i can see this red looking great if you're going for say a warhammer-esque mars approach or even those really red areas of like the arizona and um other areas the aussie desert that would be a great primer here for me i probably should have gone with a brown or even a beige here but this one was really cheap so i used it anyway and you'll see a little bit in the final model where it's poking out but that's okay sometimes those little color variations is what i like to see and of course, since we have already covered most of our foam with that wall filler mix, we don't have to worry too much about the foam melting or being damaged by the spray. We've already protected it. We've done our due diligence in this case. So it's time to prime. Now you can see I've got my nice red velvet dunes ready for action here. Very red, much more red than I originally intended, but that's what happens sometimes. We are scavengers in many instances and we'll use what is cheapest. So for me, it's time to start actually getting this sand base down, the more exciting part of this build. Now the first thing we need to do here is get our sand base ready. Now for me, I use a lot of grouts in my mixes and picked a more beige one for this. Now they have got whiter mixes and you could kind of combine the white and the beige yellowy mixes together to get like a really authentic white dune look if that's what you're looking for. For me, I went with the beige and then added a bit of like aquarium sands. Sands that are a bit more rough, a bit larger than the general grout mix, but also add a lot of color variations to it. Little blacks and reds and brown mixes in it. And so that kind of adds to the approach, especially with the bush I'm intending to make here. I also added a few rocks and other lighter materials to this. Now I did scavenge this from a big bag of, I think it's called decomposed granite. It's just kind of mixed ground of rocks that gives a really nice kind of browny red little rock afterwards. Now put some of the smaller ones in my mix, stirred it all together and now we are ready to base. For this I added a complete PVA coat all over the structure kind of missing out on the trunks and rocks and other bits that I did add in, but getting all the way around, especially as much as I could in this instance. And once that's done, it's time to start sprinkling over our mix. Now you can use a range of things here from a sieve to your own hand. For me, I like to use a little bit of spoon and a bit of a, you know, sprinkle-like approach, sometimes going in with a bit of a, you know, salt bay-esque sprinkle over the top in some areas. Especially when you've got a lot of variation in your dunes, some of the undersides might not exactly get that sand mix, but sometimes that's okay, especially depending on what your primer is. You might have that as some sort of exposed stone poking out through your sand. So all good in those instances. But if you want to cover them, add a bit of PVA, sprinkle over the top of those undersides, and you are ready to go. Now, once the sand base was on, I did give it a little bit of a spritz with my wet water mix, you know, water with a little bit of detergent, just to soak it down and get all of that kind of touching the glue base underneath. Then I gave it a little spritz over the top with a glue base too. This helps all those little bits on top kind of sink and get a little bit of glue all around and harden up like a rock. One thing I do find when I do this though is that after putting all this glue mix on it kind of goes a bit darker than I intended usually. So I give it a little like uh, kind of like a sprinkle of my base sand mix over top, even just the raw kind of beige grout. And this helps lighten up the top edges, yet keep the bottom parts a bit darker. If you don't want to go to the washing stage of this, that's where I would kind of leave it, as you get a little bit of variation between the lighter sand on top and the darker down the bottom, and that is great. Now, once we have done our glue mixes, it does take a long time to dry. So I'd probably leave it overnight, if not maybe two, before proceeding to the next step. 
just to make sure that everything is completely locked down as it should be. Once that's done, it's time to get to the interesting steps of this build. Now for me, I like a good kind of reddish brown wash. Now I do have a brown wash I use pretty regularly from Vallejo. It's built as some sort of miniature wash, but I love it for terrain. It's got a really deep, dark brown to it, and it spreads quite nicely. For this, I do kind of have three different mixes of it. I first make my straight flat mix, which is usually a little bit of water, the brown mix, as well as several drops of red ink. This helps get that tone that I wanted right here. Then from there, it's kind of watering that mix down in two other lots, having kind of a mid-range one and then a quite a light one at the end. And you'll see why soon. Now for this, I like to just use my mid-range wash first, kind of going all over the base. Well, nearly all over the base, except just leaving a nice area at the top that will stay beautiful and white and pristine. This good wash does kind of sink in between a lot of our dry grout, which kind of adds a really nice shadow around, but a little bit lighter up top that you can see. Once I've done that, I use my quite watery mix to then wash around the edges that are on the top, just to kind of get that gradient right, so it's not too harsh. And then where I really want to, kind of around the deeper recesses in between the lines that I've made of some of these divots of sand and between the rocks and all that kind of stuff, I do like the heavier brown red wash. This creates a beautiful kind of shadow approach and you can really see between the highlights of the top and the lowlights around that shadowed washed area. Once that's done, I do like to give it a bit of a dry brush with a quite ivory color. This is taking off most of the color, as much as I can, and just dry brushing it around pretty much everywhere on this model. Now I do get a bit more heavier on the tops, obviously, just to get that color consistent, the nice white areas, and then a bit lighter on in that dark area. And doing that light kind of shows the difference between some of the higher sands, the low washes underneath, all that kind of stuff. Really builds that highlight mix. Now, after we've done the wash, we don't need to wait too long to start decorating, just enough to let it settle in its recesses. Now for this, I like adding a lot of tufts, especially on the side that I've decided as the less windswept area, kind of digging it into a lot of the recesses between rocks and the bark that have been painted, as well as the larger tree structures that I've pushed in. You know, you could also put a little bits of um, dried bark around here as now, small little pieces kind of flaked off around the place, just as small bits of wood get in those thicker tufts in space. And one thing I do with some of the sea foam I used in my trees earlier, you get small little tips on top that you haven't used, that you kind of cut off your main model. These make perfect little bushes on these dunes, just dipping some glue on the top, wiping that on some knock-like leaves, and then putting it on your base where you feel appropriate. I did a lot of these kind of bushes around the place, and they really sell the build a lot. Now, depending on where you're going with the build, you can add an array of other plant life as well. It just kind of depends on what sort of a biome and area you're taking inspiration on. I could have wildflowers on the mix, more taller bits of grass I've wanted to go a nice static grass approach, especially in patches on these dunes, would look great. One thing I also did was grab a little bit of driftwood I found and kind of break it off until it was a much more manageable piece and just gluing it on one of the bases too, kind of as a large fallen log. Now, one thing I did notice, I wasn't exactly happy with how the trees worked out, especially after washes and dry brushes. They just didn't feel right on things. So I think I might just go back on this build eventually and just add a few bits and pieces of coarse turf on top of the tree, just so they're slightly growing in the dunes. I think that would kind of add a little bit more. I did want them a little bit bare, so it was a bit more barren, but I've already decided to have this a bit more of a lively, sandy dune area. So having a little bit more of that taller wildlife growing too, I think would add a lot to the space. Now, as you can see, this process has not taken very long at all and could probably be done mostly in an afternoon. The longest part here is the waiting time when glue and all that grout is drying. So just maybe in the afternoon when you get home from work, do the main parts of the build, slap on that grout, and then when you get back home the next day, it is ready to wash and ready to play with. That is what I like about terrain. Terrain that looks beautiful, realistic on the table like this has a lot of variation in its plant life and just feels so unique on the table. Well, thanks for sticking around, everybody, and I will see you next time following along with this tutorial on basing and taking it up to another terrain level. <laughs>